In this tutorial I'm going to talk about converting an image to black and white in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So I'm just going to start with this. This is a raw image off a smartphone. Um, I'm kind of very pleased with it as it is. It's got lots of detail in there. Um, it's got lots of texture. It's very sharp, which is all makes it um, an excellent image for um, for, for editing and then look over the histogram we've got a great range of tones in here as well we're not losing any detail on either end so the first thing i'm going to do and and basically the way that i work and it's the easiest thing to do in, in lightroom really is just kind of start at the top and work your way down um, on this kind of on the toolbar on the right hand side there so basically the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to the crop tool here now I, generally i don't do this as a first step if if everything's kind of fine and um, with mo as with most tools in um, in Lightroom, you kind of jump about anywhere. You can jump from one place to the other, and, and the image can be re recomposed a, a number of times while you're editing. Um, but for me, there's just this dark area here and this kind of bright area here, which are distracting from the image. So I'm just going to give it a, a, a bit of a, a tweak, just bring that in, and just crop them out. And for me, that just takes away those kind of couple of distracting elements at the edge there. I'm just going to kind of um, tweak the exposure a little bit, just bring that down. And what I can see here is there's kind of like a bit of a, a kind of a shadow over this right hand side. It's a bit darker down here than it is over here. There's this kind of light area at the top here. And so I just kind of want to uh, reduce that down a bit just to kind of bring it into line with everything else. So I'm just going to go. So I'm just going to go to the brush tool and just reduce the exposure on there and the highlights a bit and I'm just going to kind of quite generally and roughly kind of go over those lighter areas kind of want it to be a bit lighter in the in the middle still I'm not going to go too much because I want that to kind of be the center of attention this area in the middle anyway um, and then I'm just kind of going to go back into editing normally so as I do with most images I'm just going to bring down the highlights for starters just to kind of bring back some detail in where those particular highlights on the water are and then I'm just going to slide up the shadows just to bring some detail back in these darkest areas and I'm just going to push that up a little bit and then I'm just going to use the tone curve just to increase the the contrast and just push up the highlights bring down the shadows and for me using the tone curve is the kind of um, uh, the kind of the best way to do it because you've got a lot of room to play with in terms of um, shadows and highlights and, and um, also it's the graduated um, uh, way that these uh, tones were applied and so just pull that down and already that's kind of standing out um, much more now that you can really see the um, the texture and the kind of the water droplets and everything else are really quite um, quite detailed in there a lot of texture showing the colors are boosted now that we've got that increase in contrast as well and actually that's a really good starting point I mean it's just kind of like that's a great as a, as a standalone image as it is um, and you can see we've still not lost any any detail here. But what I'm gonna gonna do, because I just want this edge to be a bit bit darker just in general, I'm just gonna scroll down to effects here to vignette, and I'm just gonna slide this in a little bit. I'm gonna increase the feather just to make it a bit softer, not so obvious. And straight away, that's bringing your eye kind of into the centre here. And then that vignette just kind of darkens these edges down, but we're not losing too much detail. We're still just touching that edge there, so we have got some darks where we're starting to lose a bit of the detail. While I'm down here, I'm just going to switch on these two things as well. It doesn't really make much difference on this smartphone image, but um, it doesn't do any harm either. It just it, it removes some of those kind of imperfections that the lenses have. So I'm going to scroll back up again, um, and so as a color image, that's looking pretty good. Um, I can improve, like push up the vibrance a little bit, or push up the saturation. Saturation can be a bit overpowering sometimes, 
um, vibrance I find is a little bit more subtle and um, particularly if you're doing something like portraits with uh, with skin tones and that vibrance doesn't really affect the, the, the skin tones in an image um, okay so I'm, I'm kind of happy with that as a as a color image and there is a reason for working in color I mean it's just it gives me the that kind of straight line of things without having to worry too much about where I'm going with the black and white at the moment and um, one of the reasons, so you, with with digital cameras, particularly with the mirrorless ones, you have um, modes to shoot in black and white. Um, but because you're shooting in RAW, it'll come into into Adobe Lightroom as a color image. So you can go out there and shoot specifically shoot with the intention of getting black and white images. Um, you just have to kind of work through it as uh, when you once you get into Lightroom. And for me, that's kind of the best way to work. So I'm always about capturing the image with the best amount range of tones, the best amount of detail, the most amount of detail I can get. Um, that will give me as many options as possible when I get into Lightroom. And I might come in with the, uh, you know, with the initial idea that this is going to be a black and white image, but it may be that once I get it here, that I decide that it's better in color, or it may be a bit down the line, I might redo it in color. And it just gives me lots of options, um, kind of shooting in colour and then going to black and white um, afterwards. So I'm quite happy with that as it has got lots of detail and really quite like the highlights and the raindrops and things like that. So now I'm going to just go up to black and white here. I'm just going to click on black and white. And you can see what's happened. It's just given this completely kind of flat um, look to the image now with just lots of tones of grey. And so we definitely need to up the con contrast on that. Um, at one time, there wasn't this black and white colour selection in uh, Lightroom. Um, it, what you had to do instead was just go down to the saturation slider and reduce the saturation. And that's not a million miles different to, to what we get with black and white. Um, so I am just going to increase the contrast a bit more. And you can see already what that's doing. It's just making everything punch out a little bit and just up the highlights a bit. So to get a really kind of a, a really good strong punchy black and white image, what we're looking for is we're looking for solid blacks, um, some white detail. Like we've got some some absolutely pure white just on some of these areas here, and then we're looking for everything in between. And we want detail in the shadows and detail in the highlights as well. And that's kind of like the traditional idea of of what a, a good uh, black and white image is obviously that's you know a sweeping statement not all images are like that and you know there's lots of times when you want an image to be subtle and lots of soft um, subtle muted tones um, and you don't want these blacks in and same the other way sometimes you want lots of dark tones um, with kind of very minimal kind of highlight detail in there so this is you know just a, a sweeping statement but for this particular um, type of uh, subject with massive amounts of texture this is a really kind of this is this is the way to, to go for me so one of the things that you might notice is that we lost a bit of detail in the shadows here you can see that it's gone off here now okay so when we're shooting um, the image that we want to come in has got as much detail in as, as possible kind of with our um, tones if you like sat in the, the center of the the kind of the the, the the confines of the box if you like but this time it's about aesthetics and so because it's quite a dark image and I'm trying to make it specifically dark most of the tones are down this left hand side here it's interesting I'll just roll over the kind of the, um, the clipping detail there and you can see that we've lost quite a lot of um, shadow detail so what I'm going to do is um, there's a couple of ways I can go through this I want to just bring back some of that detail in the, those darkest areas I'm just going to move the black slider you can see what's happening it is doing that but what's also happening is it's brightening up some of the highlights as well um, so another thing that we can do is we can scroll down to color and click on this and that's now changed to black and white and so we know there's lots of greens and lots of yellows in this so if we kind of slide the the green and yellow slider we can see that that makes a difference uh, probably blues as well so we've got control over quite a wide range of tones there um, so we can use them to um, to kind of refine the shadow and highlight areas and then 
something else that makes quite a, quite a bit of a difference is a presence area here. So you've got to be quite careful with presence because particularly in colour images it can kind of really overdo things. Um, but in black and white the clarity um, slider I find just really increases that, that contrast, that punch in the image, images. Um, and what I've ended up doing is just increasing that, that contrast even more and made those blacks even deeper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to uh, masking tools here. I'm just going to get a brush and then I'm going to just bring out some of that detail, just go over that quite gently, just a little bit at a time. You can see that kind of detail start to come up there now. And you can kind of take quite a, quite a bit of time over this and just kind of you know, gradually kind of work that detail, detail out of there. And again, it's kind of jumping backwards and forwards between the different settings. And you can see the difference that's made to the detail, but we've still got, it's not overdoing it, we've still got those kind of jet blacks in there, those real dark tones. So, I mean, this looks quite good on screen, even with those really dark tones in it. Um, what you have to bear in mind is, you know, it may look great here, but if you're trying to put something out like this onto um, print, that you may have problems, what you'll end up with is some of these areas become quite blocked out. And so what you really need to do is make sure that there's a lot more detail in this if you're going to print the image. And basically that comes down to um, just the, the really quite small contrast ratio that there is on paper compared to a back, backlit screen. So I'll just bring some more of this detail. So we can keep playing with this. You know, it's one of them things you can just spend you can spend hours hours doing this, but as a as a really simple kind of adjustment, I think that's that's all right. Maybe a little bit hot in the middle there. I'm just going to do the same. Just bring that down. That's it. That's it for me. Just. I think that just about does it. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful. So thank you very much.